A lone termite, Elate, scrambles across the alien surface amidst the chaos of wings, panic, and the gnashing mandibles of the ants wanting to kill them. Where should she turn? Where had her husband termite gone? She had no choice but to keep running. All around her, termites were being murdered one by one. Termite bodies falling in from everywhere. Whoa! She almost got caught. She dashed away from the struggling termite whose fate was sealed. Her only shot at survival was to seek refuge and hide under a clump of moss. Under such cover, the ants would likely not be able to find her amidst this all-out war that has broken out on this night. The nauseous stench of mating pheromones and the blood of the frantic termite royals, along with the burning formic acid that was sprayed mercilessly on them by the ferocious spiny ant colony, filled the air and reeked of death throughout all of Polyraxia. I watched wide-eyed as the spiny ants pounced and tore into every termite king and queen that had unluckily fallen into the ants' territory and couldn't get out. Many of these termite kings and queens would never go on to be monarchs of their own termite colonies, but instead will be meat for an eager and hungry colony of spiny ants. But in this bloody war of nature between ants and termites, one might assume that the ants obviously win and the poor termites inevitably lose. Well, not so fast. Keep on watching to find out the true winners of this termites versus ants war of survival. Welcome to the Ants Canada Ant Channel. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. Guys, I've got some sad news. Sadly, the two pairs of termite elates that I captured a few weeks ago that I was hoping to start a termite colony from, ended up dying. I kind of expected this and wasn't too bummed out by it because I know that in the world of termites, unlike in the world of ants, colony founding success rate is much, much lower. And as you'll see and learn in a bit, is all part of the termite success formula in nature. Just a warning though guys, some scenes in this video may be disturbing to some viewers. So brace yourself for the ultimate termite bloodbath that is coming up ahead. I myself was shocked watching the entire event unfold. So here's how it all went down. Earlier this week, I noticed the swarm, a huge termite swarm of millions of virgin queen and king elates filled the air so numerous that if you opened your mouth long enough, one would surely fly into it. It was on this night that this particular species of fairly large termites was having their annual mating nuptial flight, a nationwide event in which each of the termite kings and queens had waited to partake for their whole lives. It was on this night that each of these winged termite kings and queens had one vital task, to select and quote unquote marry their one true love to live and breed with for the rest of their lives for years and years to create termite colonies of their own underground. And I say marry because that's literally what they do. When a king and queen pair find each other, they do this sort of ritual which you see here. And then suddenly, they engage in a tandem run of survival to seek a suitable place underground to create a founding chamber in which they will lay eggs and start their own colonies. As you will see, a great deal of these elates fail to make it out alive on these nuptial flight nights. And in fact, the majority will die. Predators love these nuptial flights because they get to enjoy an utter feast. Spider webs everywhere get draped with unlucky termite elates. Lizards enjoy the termite elate buffet. As for me, I love when these termite nuptial flights happen because it's a chance for my ant colonies living in open top setups to feast on termite beef limitlessly. I simply fixate lights over the ant terrariums and the termite kings and queens 
fall in. As a human, it looks pretty crazy, but at ground level, from the insect's perspective, the scene is much, much more grim. Termites were fighting to get across to the other side of the glass, to get closer to the light, not knowing that behind it lay death. The spiny ants of a colony named the Blades of Midas danced around the termite bodies they had killed after falling from the skies. It was a frantic hunt of catch, seize, and kill these ants were not really used to. The termites were strong and quick to slip away, but the ants had jaws and burning formic acid to immobilize the termites. This termite here thought it could get away. But bam! The ants are skilled grapplers. It was truly going to be a buffet for the ants tonight. Once the ants had a good grip, it was almost impossible to get away. Plus the chances of escape decrease drastically if more than one ant comes in for the kill. Once in a death hold, the ant sprayed formic acid. And for this termite, it was right in the softer exposed tissue of the neck. The termite struggled for its life in pain, but there would be no escape now. my eyes as the ants picked off the termites one by one. What was crazy to me seeing all of this is I usually feed these ants freshly killed feeder roaches. So these ants have never had to kill moving prey in their life. But watching them coordinate a full attack like this was pretty mind-blowing. Mind-blowing to know that the predatory instincts with which Mother Nature had equipped them to survive were still there and ready to be activated at any time. A part of me feels bad for the termites, but I realize this is a very narrow-minded and human perspective. Looking at the greater picture, this is very much so a natural and necessary process. You see, in the wild, these ants would depend on annual events like this termite nuptial flight for a surplus of protein. Kind of like how a hunting season would bring a year's worth of meat for a small hunting village of people. The ants really need this abundance of meat to bring on an explosion of eggs by their queens, grow their young, and as we've seen in last week's episode, to spin silk needed to build their enormous debris nests. These spiny ants are special in that they don't dig nests in soil like regular ants but rather construct web-lined nests of material gathered from their environment. My inclination is that if we could somehow track the colony growth rate, the egg-laying rate, nest-building rate, and even the timing for production of new queens and male ants, that they would be centered around these key protein surplus events, these termite nuptial flights. I suspect that not only these ants, but a plethora of different animals depend on the valuable nourishment these termite nuptial flight seasons bring in the ecosystems they occur. In fact, I suspect that termites are the biggest, most important feeder insect Mother Nature provides for insectivorous animals. Yes, ants have nuptial flights too, but ants are skinny and generally not full of nutrition, so most animals leave them alone. But termites are fat little packets of nutrients and these termite kings and queen elates are pretty much defenseless. So they make amazing food for predators. As mentioned earlier in this video, termites depend on quantity to succeed. Their tactic is to produce millions upon millions of these virgin queens and kings, more than is possible for all the other creatures to eat. And you can guarantee that a few will actually survive. 
It's a very resource and nutrient expensive tactic on the termites part, because think about how much food, space, and care you need to create these large reproductive termites. But as you will find out later, this is all part of the genius that is the termite life cycle and evolution. What I saw next broke my heart though. AC family, watch this. My eyes caught sight of a bonded pair of termites that had gotten married inside Polyraxia. Crazy to think that despite the threat of being killed, the drive to get married was still strong and ongoing in the termites. Even with an ant killing its partner, this termite royal was unwilling to leave. As the saying goes, termites believe in death do us part. She was not about to leave her partner to die. She looked back, almost calling her king to tandem run with her to safety, which he couldn't possibly do now. She came to circle him to get him to tandem run, but this was a lethal move. She too fell victim to the ants. They would die together tonight. Watching these intense scenes happening on a micro level was difficult, but the more I stepped back, the easier it was to appreciate the importance of what was going on here. The termite tactic of numbers became so evident as I scanned the surface of Polyraxia. By this time in the night, there were way more termites than the ants could finish. Termite wings and bodies littered the floor as ants did their best to catch up with the never-ending supply of termites that wouldn't stop falling from the skies. I caught sight of that lone termite who weaved her way through the chaos, coming close to being caught by the ants many times, but successfully disappearing under some moss where the ants didn't seem to be able to find her. I then began to wonder what if a king and queen married pair in Polyraxia did manage to escape the jaws and acid sprays of the spiny ants. There weren't enough ants to catch them all. What if, among the droves of unlucky termite casualties, one lucky pair actually managed to survive in here by getting underground on time? Once successfully deep in the soil, the termites would be safe from the spiny ants because as mentioned, these spiny ants don't dig tunnels to nest underground. Any termites underground would actually be safe and free to start their own termite colonies. I began to wonder if there were any termite elite survivors within the soils of Polyraxia. Well, there was only one way to find out. And if a termite mound would one day start to swell up from the ground in Polyraxia, we'll know our answers as to why and how. Wouldn't that be something? And so, the crazy scene we had all seen tonight actually made me realize something pretty profound. And it's this. Sure, it's easy to look at an individual scene and feel bad for the dying termites. And people might say, yup, the ants win this war and the termites lose. But when you look at the much bigger picture, that's not so much the case. Yes, the ants benefit from these annual feeding events but I realized, in a way, the termites themselves also win in light of the termite number strategy. The more termite elates you can produce, the more you could be sure that only the truly savvy, that tiny 0.0001 or whatever percent of the strongest termites with the best genes for smarts, agility, and whatever else helps those surviving termites on this truly dangerous night get to go on to pass their genes to the next generation. If you're not the best, then the predators pick you off, so only the remaining premium bloodline can continue the lineage. This allows termites, as an order of insects, to truly evolve quicker, powered by natural selection. A strategy of numbers is the brilliance of termite biology. And so in a way, these termites also win. In fact, I realized that all players in this natural war actually win. The ants the termites, the spiders, the lizards, and that if you look at the big picture, there really is no loser in a natural war like this. There is only one true winner, Mother Nature herself. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the ants, the termites, and all of Mother Nature's perfect life forms. It's ant love forever.
Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention that I too am a winner tonight. I caught a ton of termite newlyweds. Future termite colony, here we come. Yeah!